So on HackMD, I've pasted a link. Uh, let's see, here's my screen. The link is this here. Mm, there it is for the recording, but um, yeah, for people in the course, check HackMD instead. So let's say that I am someone and I need to run LAMPS, which is a molecular dynamics code, and I want to run it on Triton. And I know it should use MPI, which is basically the, you hire multiple Italians each to watch one pot, and they can even be in other kitchens, and somehow they communicate with a uh, manager and send all of the results back, and that manager distributes the different parts around. Okay, so I'm here, I see this, and I want to read this gas.lamb, which is the lamps file. Okay, so I copy the link, and okay, here I am on Triton. Uh, uh, Why does my prompt log not work? Oh, just a minute. Mm. Okay, uh, why does host name not appear here, but test does, that's just weird. Okay, well, let's just go on. So first I will change to my work directory, which we will read more about later. Um, then I will make a directory uh, for this work and then go there. Okay, so now I want to copy this input file to here. So I know I can use this program called wgit, which will take a URL and basically save it to this computer. Well, it so actually. So wgit is work. basically like. Uh... Yes, download a file. Uh, so in this case, I see I can't just download the file. Somehow it's blocking the other tools. So let's do it the old fashioned way. I will actually open the file and copy and paste it. Copy, nano, uh, paste. Okay, I will in nano control X and why to save it. If I list what is here, I see, yes, there's gas.lam. So remember, we're not expecting anyone to follow along with what we're doing. Okay, so I know that LAMPS is probably installed on Triton. So I will module, module spider LAMPS and see, this will search the software that's installed on Triton. And I see there's these modules here. So my notes say I should use this LAMPS module. So module load LAMPS. Okay, so now I wanna test it. MPI run, MPI. So how do I know these things? So MPI run, we learn about tomorrow. LMP MPI is what I know is the program for LAMPS. <coughs> um, that's the LAMPS program I'm actually running. And then I know the syntax is in gas.in. Is that actually listed on here anymore? Serial in. Yeah, so like the documentation is sort of saying what I should be doing. 
yes, LAMPS has a possibility that you can compile it in a serial fashion or with this MPI that enables it to use multiple computers or multiple processes at the same time. Yeah. So let's try running it. I'm pushing enter. And OK, there's some error. What can it be? Uh, I scroll up. Cannot open script input gas dot in. Uh, uh, it's gas dot lamb I stored it as. I see. Yeah, OK, gas dot lamb. This demonstrates the next really important thing we do, which is reading error messages and not getting scared. OK, so I see something that looks like there's probably error messages here. RM cannot remove IMG, notice file or directory. So it looks like it's trying to save some images for what's in there. So again, I'm not going to be scared, but I'm going to use nano again to open this. And let's see, what's the stuff? Shell remove images, make their images. I'm going to comment out all of this image related stuff and also the video related stuff. So Triton is, um, I guess this is a small demo where they want to visualize what the results are. But usually on Triton, when we do big things, we run it without the visualization and then we'll visualize afterwards. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So why comment it out visualization stuff? Control X, yes, and save it again. Let's try running. So this is right now running on the login node. So basically, this is running in my own kitchen. Or what's the good metaphor here? This is running in the like main lobby of the apartment building, where there is a small um, microwave and stuff like that, instead of going and running in the proper kitchens. And if you run too much on the one um, on in the, on the login node, then this is taking resources from other people. And you might get a polite little note that says, please don't do this. OK, so I managed to run it on the login node, but this is just for testing. So let's find a way to actually run it with other. Um... Well, OK, let's see if we can run it with more processors. So I know MPI. Yes, so, so here Richard was running uh, with with an MPI run. So it, it basically runs on the login node itself. So uh, mm -hmm. that's usually not recommended yeah. because uh, that's shared by everybody else. There was also a question in the HackMD that why, why in Helsinki University you, there's a recommendation how to, to use SRUN and various parameters for it. Yeah. We'll talk about SRUN later, and yeah. it's coming that's, in this demo as well. Yeah, that's actually what I'm about to do now. So what I usually do myself, so if it takes 36 seconds, then that's so small, it doesn't matter. So I, I run it as simple as possible to eliminate any possible bugs with things like this image stuff. So I want to run simple first and then slowly get more complicated instead of going to the complicated thing and have to debug multiple things at once. So now we're still running without Slurm, so without the workload manager, but I'm going to try to tell it to use 10 processors. Hmm. Did this work? It looked like there was an error message here. Mm. I'm but, guessing there's some sort of um, uh, network problem yeah. with it, but 
might work. But it seemed to work. But anyway, it did seem to work, and it seemed to run. Oh, total wall time zero. So it seemed like it ran. Uh, actually, I guess MPI run does it not work? Well, it seemed to run a lot faster anyway. Okay, so now let's do it the right way. So I'm going to make a Slurm script. Script.sh. Uh, bash. I guess it what doesn't... Richard is now writing is is like instructions to the queue system. So so previously when he was running with the MPI run, that's how many documentations are usually written. Like the documentation is usually written in a way that like how you would run them if you own the place, basically. Like how would you how would you mm. uh, do what if you um, if you completely know that you you have access to all of the resources in the system and stuff. But uh, in in the cluster, because it's a shared system, you have to go through the queue in order to run stuff. Uh, so now Richard is write, writing these uh, yeah. uh, instructions to the queue how it should behave and so that it can do the stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So first up here, what you see in red, this is the instructor instructions to the queue manager. So it says, I need a kitchen with 500 megabytes of memory. I expect this recipe to last five minutes and I need 10 burners on a stove. And it will go through the whole building and find a cluster or a kitchen or multiple kitchens that satisfy these requirements. How do I guess this? Well, I know it's much less than five. And if I say five, that's basically zero. So I'm not gonna think about it. And 500 megabytes of memory, well, it's probably a lot less than that, and 500 megabytes is nothing, so I'll do that. I tell it I want to get rid of any modules I have loaded and load lamps, so this ensures that I get to a clean state. And then instead of MPI run, I have S run, and then the same command that I've already debugged from before. So I will save this file. Ah, so I used a different, I didn't use nano to edit this. And now I submit it with sbatch, which is basically, this says, this is the thing where we're packaging it in an envelope and sending it to the queue manager to say, I want to run this somewhere. And we run it and it's been sent off. Uh, if I run slurm queue, I can see, okay, there is nothing running here. So it either finished really quickly or something else went wrong. The output doesn't appear in the terminal, but appears here. Uh, hmm. But why would it not be able to load the lamps module? Hmm. So these error messages are basically caused by not being able to load lamps like this. Um, um, it okay. might be that, like, can you can you try the all the newer lamps modules with the lower case? Mm -hmm. mm. Are they? The other lamps module. Uh, but was this? This is the right one, right? Yeah. Maybe before we go changing this, I will module purge or purge to get rid of the old modules that I had, and then. So my notes from last year show the uppercase module so I wonder if there was a reason for that uh, there was some problem in that it yeah I, I think um, it might be that, that this uh, lamps uh, module is quite old so this is the this is the kind of situation where you 
go go to the get help section and <laughs> probably ask us yeah. what's what's wrong uh so yeah. that we can then install a newer version of lumps that probably would work better um, um, especially here because it's something that we installed and made available to you you should come ask us for questions soon but uh mm -hmm. But this is the basic idea that we get to by the end of, or actually we get to this point by early tomorrow. So instructions for the script manager and then what you actually run. And here we say dash n 10, which means we request 10 burners to run this on. We can return to this demo tomorrow. We'll probably, I'll, probably today install a newer version of LAMP so that we can, <laughs> we can redo the demo tomorrow uh, yeah. with a brand new LAMP version. Yeah. Should we check HackMD? Let's see what we've got. Um, uh, OK, array jobs. Test, uh, testing, debugging. Should testing debugging be handled? So you can, um, yeah, I think I sort of answered this. So I personally am a debug with really short jobs on login node. And once something starts taking more than a few seconds, then start submitting it. Um, but these interactive sessions we're going to talk about next actually are another really good option. And probably what I would do more quickly. Yeah, like um, these demos were were supposed to at least uh, show show you this kind of like a <clears throat> like a workflow that you usually have in the cluster that you you write some instructions for the queue to do and then the queue does it for you basically and and <laughs> you can get. Um, you can run these parallel jobs in the queue. You can run whatever jobs you want, but uh, we'll we'll talk about it uh, when the time arises for specific uh, specific yeah. programs. Okay, the parameters needed for queues. We'll get to that uh, later today. Um, yeah, this <clears throat> let's ignore. We don't actually uh, yeah, go into details. Don't, yeah. About the NPR run command, this you shouldn't try to run replicate the demos. Uh, yeah, these were like, just meant to be like this kind of a um, appetizer for yeah. the actual meal, which yeah. will come uh, during the talk. Yeah. 